Salute family, it's Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. You are now watching TV Savalas. To learn more about Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement, join me on YouTube at Tank Commander Zulu. And also follow me on IG at tank.commander.zulu. On Instagram, it's all about positive male enforcement. Fire in the hole, baby. Rock steady. Yo, so today this, <coughs> dang man, ah, adjust the seatbelt. <coughs> Today's Sunday, happy Sunday, it's actually afternoon, it's 1.30, uh, y'all see a head a little itchy. This morning was kind of, kind of, I'm going to say crazy, but it was, it was kind of uh, crazy. Turn that air down kind of crazy um so since y'all know i'm trying to do this application for uh to get this home equity line of credit that i have no internet at the house and i got a text message today saying that they were going to send somebody out tomorrow which i told y'all that yesterday so anyway um <coughs> Not only can I not do that, I can't do my homework. <coughs> and so my wife was like, go to Starbucks and at least do your homework. And so um, this morning we ended up getting the kids dressed and cleaned up and all the stuff. And my wife went to the gym. Now that was at like, whew, that was, let's say, eight o'clock this morning right and i'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say let's say she left and went to the gym at like 9 30. she didn't get back until about one o'clock which is about 30 minutes ago so not only did she go to the gym she also went to go get some food and stuff which technically she didn't need to go to get no food we got plenty of food at the house but for some reason she just has this thing where she has to go buy food, like at the grocery store. And so anyway, she bought some food at the grocery store and she's cooking it up right now. And um, I've been watching the football games. And so let me say this, <clears throat> I'm a 49ers fan. You know, I'm from Oakland, but I, I can't stand the Raiders. I'm a Niner. And, you know, today we played the Cincinnati Bengals and one of my homeboys on Facebook I believe it was uh, Willie Flight. I believe he's a Cincinnati Bengals fan. And, you know, he put a little meme up about, oh, San Francisco 49ers um, or the 49ers getting ready for the game today against Cincinnati. And it was like it was like on some homosexual type stuff, basically. Um, so there's a couple things to that. Number one is this. The Niners don't play in San Francisco anymore. It's number one, right? So, and even if they did, the little stereotypical thing about the 49ers or San Francisco being, you know, a homosexual place, um, just be, be careful of that, man. When you from the Bay and you know the Bay, you know what I'm saying, and you've been in San Francisco plenty of times, my wife from San Francisco, you know what I'm saying, she lived on the backside of the Tenderloin Projects, you know what I'm saying, it's some, some of the hardest people, you know what I mean, Mask masculine people come from out of San Francisco. O.J. Simpson was from San, is from San Francisco. You know what I'm saying? So, come on, man. And then you got JT, the bigger figure, all these other rappers and stuff who from uh, Frisco and um, Legends. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, people people who are not from the Bay or not from San Francisco, they don't come to the Bay and they don't, <clears throat> they don't make those kind of comments and they don't say those things because they know. You know, Frisco, the city, is well established you know what I mean as far as it being um, you know it's reputation in the streets anyway um, the Niners actually play in Santa Clara which is about right outside of San Jose uh, which is Southern Southern California it's South, it's South Bay so it's, it's South of the Bay so anyway um, <clears throat> I know it's all, it wasn't nothing like serious. I know he didn't mean that. You know what I mean? But it's just kind of, 
just like, you know, other people around the nation may be thinking about San Francisco as this kind of place. You know what I mean? It's really not, you know what I'm saying? Um, not to the degree which y'all think it is. Uh, more so, it's a place like Atlanta, you know, which you got to look out for. Uh, but anyway, um, the Niners handled their business, man, as far as the football game goes. It's like 41 to 17. And the last little touchdown um, Cincinnati got, not saying it doesn't count, but it was in garbage time, less than a minute left. And, you know what I mean? Dude got open, missed a couple. T- he uh, burned a couple people. A couple people missed some tackles. But it's during garbage time, and the game was way, way over. So we give them a little 17 points. But really, the score is 41 to 10. You know what I'm saying? Um, so shout out to the 49ers. They doing their thing. It's two weeks in a row, two victories in a row. And uh, Kyle Shanahan, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really a fan of Shanahan. Um, I know what he did in Atlanta as the offensive coordinator was amazing with Matt Ryan. But I don't really like the the whole, oh, he did well here. So he's going to come here and he's going to do well here. I don't kind of like that way of thinking um, in sports because you do well, yes. But it boils down to the players on the field execute, whether you're talking about basketball or, or football. You know what I mean? It boils down to the players actually executing the plays, you know what I mean, uh, to the best of their abilities. And when you come from a, a great team, like Atlanta was a few years ago, and they had great dynamic players, to a team like the 49ers who was, was rebuilding and still are rebuilding, it's just like the expectations need to be way lower. You know what I'm saying? And let's give them five years to even get something developed. So this is actually year three for uh, Shanahan. And um, so far, so good. But it's still real early in the season. And we beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which we really should have lost. But that game was so sloppy. You know what I mean? And just so garbage on both sides from both teams. We we got that win. Like, you know what I mean? It was luck, basically. But today's win was more so dominant. You know what I mean? Over 500 yards of total um over total total yards, over 500 yards, and you know we did our things today. You know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> next week, I believe we play the Pittsburgh Steelers at home at Santa Clara, <clears throat> and that's going to be a big game because if we can beat Pittsburgh, who I think I got to check after I make this video, because Pittsburgh was actually down by two points versus the Seattle Seahawks, so um, I got to see if who actually won that game. But as of this moment, I am going to um, go to uh, I'm actually going to go to Wingstop. This is Wingstop right here. I'm going to go to Wingstop. I know they got the games on in there. I'm going to grab some food in there because I haven't ate nothing. Well, I ate some noodles for breakfast this morning. I ate some pork noodles. But I'm going uh, to go to Wingstop get some food, watch a little bit of the game and catch up on the other games I played and then head over to Starbucks which is walking distance right across and start on um, my homework for these classes um, well at least for my um, econ class, I believe it's my econ class and uh, go from there but um, it's 1.30 wait that's the wrong time again it's 1.28 and, um, you know, <clears throat> this is what it is so far. Uh, I need to get this uh, information to the bank. But I'm more so excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be more of a free day to get some stuff done as far as business. Today, I just need to focus on my school stuff. I really I don't have any plans for when I get back to the house. Except eat dinner and probably watch another game tonight. Um, spend some time with my wife and my babies. But, oh my goodness, we'll see. Um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, hit the bell so I can keep bringing you content. And we're gonna go from there, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thanks to all my subscribers already. Oh, what is this? Uh, like 4,876 of y'all. Something to that nature. 
So my nephew just hit me up, one of my nephews, and he said he was uh, out here in the area. I gave him the address to where I was at the Starbucks. I just got done doing some homework. My brain hurt, my body hurt, I'm tired. <clears throat> uh, he said he was gonna come through. So I'm gonna wait out here for him for a little bit. He said uh, he was out here. I can't be out here all night waiting for him, so. Uh, I'll probably give him like 15 minutes. I'm actually gonna charge the uh, phone up a little bit. It's uh, about 5, 5.42 right now. So I'll get him to about six o'clock. Wherever he had out here, it shouldn't take him that long to get here if he in the area. Is that him right there? In that red thing? I told him I'm at Starbucks, so. Uh, this might be him. I don't know why he went just to come to the Starbucks if that is him. I see somebody on their phone in the car, so you know, make you think like they might be trying to text me or something. Or call me. Uh but I'm tired man I, I kind of just uh, BS that homework to be honest with y'all I, I just ran through it this man got tinted windows on the front how you got tents on the front that's crazy you know he going to jail I wonder if I can get that on there I don't know that ain't my uh, nephew I can't really tell. I'm gonna see if I can get this car with the tinted windows in the front. That's crazy. See that silver car right there? Why he ain't in prison? Sheesh, he must got a, a eye condition or something. But I don't know. So, a little like a, man, that ain't him. Can't be him. Dang. But yeah, man. It's my day so far, about 5.45. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? To be honest with y'all, uh, as far as doing anything else. Um, I just gotta wait till tomorrow to be able to handle the other business. <sighs> I might slide in Popeyes. Y'all see Popeyes right there. I might go to Popeyes, I don't know. I'll, well, Athena's cooking, so. But maybe I wanna get some beans and rice. Who mess with Pop if you mess with Popeye's beans and rice, y'all let me know. Leave a comment below. Let's see what's happening. That dude over there is still on the phone, so that must not be him. My phone ain't got hit up yet, so. Man, I know I'm tired. Um, and I got a lot more homework to do. I just did like one assignment of the homework. I still got another one to do for, um, what's that, econ class, account? And then I have my other homework for my econ class that I need to do. So, tomorrow's gonna be ugly. Uh, I might go to the gym tonight, maybe tonight. Oh no, that's like a Mexican dude. A big boy too, but he about 385 pounds. Defensive lineman. Man. I'm still tripping on this car. How you got all your windows tinted dark, even the front glass, and you riding around like it's all good. Sheesh. He must be from Mexico. I'm about to go in the whip. Put the phone on the charge. Check out a couple more football games. I mean, I guess watch a little bit of football. Let me unlock the door first before the alarm go off. They're like, oh, you don't belong here. I'm like, yes, I do. Oh. Backpack goes in first. Oh, the sun right in the car. Ooh. I like her hair. She got some nice hair. Let's charge this up one time. See if 
My nephew hit me back within the next 10 minutes or so. Oh, I got a drink, boy. A wing stop. I went up in there and had um, lemon pepper wings and um, some Louisiana rub. Just watching the games before I went to do my homework. It's pretty legit. Um, oh, man. I got to tell y'all this. This is kind of important. I'm bring the phone up right here, actually. Let me see. Y'all can Okay. Um, so... Hopefully my nephew don't pull up to me when I'm trying to tell y'all about this stuff. Some real stuff. Um, mental. On my mental status. Um, you know, I said uh, on my other video before about, uh, you know, me having a problem with loving myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, if y'all haven't seen that video, it's me and my sister um, did a seafood uh, mukbang. And uh, y'all check that one out. It's the longest video. I think it's like 47 minutes. Y'all check that video out. Um, and I, that's tor towards the end of the video. So go to like the last 10 minutes of it to uh, check out, you know, what I said about that. But, you know, I've been really, uh, you know, to be I'm quite honest with y'all, man, maybe for like the past, my sister, Trees passed away. Um summertime last year and so ever since about that time man i've been kind of dealing with this um state of uh not being the best me you know so and this and then um i went to a grief counseling and then the question was raised that really stuck with me and it asked um when was the last time you were happy and then I had to really think about that and let that sit in because the last time I was truly happy, like a co continuously happy, a continuous amount of joy and happiness, um, it's been a long, long time. I've had plenty of happy moments. Like, you know, you get married, you're happy. You know, um, you start a new career, new job, you're happy. But those are like, happy that's that's happiness for a moment you know what i mean or not it or maybe for like a couple days or maybe a week but that's not like a continued state of happiness when was the last time you were actually happy and so when i really thought about it and broke it down i was like man i haven't been happy since my dad died in like 07 and then i just had to reevaluate and i was like well you know even after uh, my father passed I was happy for a little bit while I was in the church. You know, I was doing a lot of gospel rap stuff. Those of you who may know me, you know my gospel rap background. And, um, you know, once I left, um, man, I can probably pinpoint the exact time, actually, when I stopped, like, really being happy. And... It would have to be. <laughs> Ooh, sometime around after I released my gospel album. Between December 2009 up until most recently, I haven't had a continuous continuous. I don't even know if that's saying that right. A, a, a state of happiness um, for long for a long period of time since that moment. And you know, one thing um, I learned a lot since then. Um, so one thing I will say is that you know I was in the car before I went in there to go work on my homework, and I was really thinking about life and, and myself and you know what's what and finding that motivation to want to do you know what I mean and, and how to do um <coughs> and so it was like oh man um two things really stood out for me the first thing is this the church right 
um, I stopped going to church consistently. Um, and I'm not, I don't want to get on this video right now. I don't want to get too deep into all the other behind the scenes stuff. Um, but what I will say is this, I still believe in a higher power being God, but as far as like religion and especially the traditional black church or, you know what I mean? The ways of the black church, um, concerning the Bible and how they, uh, kind of are the president or the, uh, kind of are like the end all be all but everything biblical it just don't sit well with me you know what I mean um, and to kind of wrap this up you know as far as my perception of the black church they're very close minded and you know I could probably overlook that if the black church would do more in the community um, I know we're in a different age now. We're in a different, you know, uh, part of life and society. But, you know, if the church today was anything like the church of the civil rights movement, I would be behind the church 129%. But it's not like that. You know, you'll find more uh, churches talking about the injustices that's going on in their own cities versus them going to city halls and knocking on doors and finding out like you know what's what you know what i'm saying um and that's really disappointing the next thing is that was one thing and that's just part of the reason why i'm uh not as comfortable with the church um i still don't mind going to a church i still don't mind uh praising the lord i still don't mind you know going to church functions or church people like that's not my my problem or my issue you know it's just like i feel like i'm disappointed in the church for their lack of closed-mindedness for them being closed-minded in general i'm speaking black traditional churches you know what i mean in general and i feel um betrayed and lied to um about a lot of things uh concerning religion um christianity and yeah i'm just gonna kind of leave it at that as far as the church goes and my feelings so i don't go to church as often as i used to some people will probably look at this and be like well if you just go to church again you'll feel better it's not the case i, I won't because i I've, I've tried to go back to church and it's just not the same because it's just not the same um and i can go deeper into that but that's gonna have to be for another video y'all because it's other aspects to that. I don't see my nephew yet. Okay, so the second thing is this, as far as me fighting this, um, you know, uh, depression is death. You know what I mean? And not just death, because I, I experienced death a lot. You know, been at plenty of funerals, lost a lot of people, but it's these three particular deaths or lack of that these people's presence in my life that um, really are disturbing. And number one is my mom. I didn't grow up with my biological mom. She passed away when I was four years old. And uh, I always live with this, you know, it's haunted me. When I really think about it, it's haunted me my entire life. The questions of like, what if my mom was alive? And um, how different life would be if my mom was here? Like those two questions haunt me like for real um, and trying to uh, imagine you know a, a child seven eight nine years old elementary school you know have you know a stepmom you know what I mean but never accepts the love of the stepmom because in his mind and in his heart he always just wants his mom his biological mom you know and then growing up just with that kind of feeling the whole time up until he's 30 years old. You feel what I'm saying? It could get, uh, this is really, uh, it really can cloud the heart. Um, and so it's that, right? That's the one. The second thing is my father. And it's not that my father passed away. Um, that's as 
heartbreaking because once I found out that he passed away, I mean, once I found out that he was sick, the next part was inevitable. So I could cope with the death part. It's actually um, the part of um, my father living with the illness and keeping it a secret for 16 years that is not mind boggling, but it's mind boggling. And it's like, <laughs> let me just kind of be blunt here. Niggas can't hold water. You know what I'm saying? And he held this secret for 16 years. And, you know, this was a bag. He passed away in 07. You know, I was 19. And um, some family members knew about it. Some didn't. I, I, I was raised by my dad, and I didn't know he was sick to the extent, you know what I mean, of uh, having this horrible um, disease of uh, HIV. You know what I'm saying? And, um, like, when I found out, the, mo the most shocking thing is, okay, first finding out that my father um, did have HIV, and he was, ha and he, well, he had had it for 16 years, and then ultimately, since he wasn't properly taking care of himself medically, it turned into AIDS. And that's when I found out it was, like, too late. It was, like, stage four, you know. Um, so it was, like, nothing you could do medically at that point to help an individual. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of like that feeling of um, I wish you would have, not even I wish you would have told me, I wish you would have took care of yourself better. You know what I mean? Like, you could have. I'm not going to say prevented the death, but you could have probably um, extended your life a little longer to be able to see uh, me grow into a man because you passed away when I was 19 and I had just started college and everything. And, and you know, here it is 10, what, uh, 12 years later, and I'm just now graduating from uh, college, but you know, a lot of things, you know, could have been different, but it's just like, how do you hold that secret for 16 years? Or how do you not take care of yourself properly for 16 years? You know, but, um, I and mean, this is why I believe in God, because my mom died of um, AIDS as well. You know, she had HIV and it turned into AIDS, but um, that's a whole different story, too, because that can get deep into that, which I'm not going to right now. But those two deaths, and then most recently last year, my sister, uh, my dad's youngest daughter actually, uh, passed away, which was shocking, unexpected, and I really miss my big sister, man. Um, we wasn't like two peas in a pie, but we still had a loving brother-sister relationship. Um, it was so unexpected, it was so shocking. You know, she was in the hospital sick, but it was to the point where we, you know, she was getting ready to preparing to come home. And the next thing you know, it was like, oh, she passed away. And I was just, you know, I had to be there for, you know, um, <coughs> I really couldn't show that much emotion or express my emotion because as a, as a, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say as a man, but as an uncle and as someone who's looked upon my perception of my, you know, that, you know, I am a soldier. You know what I mean? I, I've been through the war. I, I've been through the pain. I've been through the struggle and I can overcome it. And so me just kind of staying strong mentally and emotionally to make sure that, you know, I'm there to support my nieces who lost their mother and uh, my great nieces who lost their grandmother. Um, and even my older sister and my older brother, you know, even though we all lost a sibling, you know, I want to be the person that they could talk to or come with or, or uh, embrace when um, they feel like, you know, they, um, they're feeling emotionally detached, especially from the loss of our sister. But I'm learning that at some point you have to, as the individual, um, acknowledge like your pain and that's kind of what I'm doing now you know what I mean like I know when my sister first passed away I'm not a drinker I'm not a you know a alcohol drinker 
at all. I might drink every now and then. But when my sister passed away, like, I went on like a little binge, you know what I mean? Nothing serious to where I am drunk, stupid, sloppy, but like, I would go to the bar, have a couple drinks. When my wife would ask me to go pick up some food from somewhere, I would go in the bar and just order uh, alcohol drink. And I was doing that more often. I was making drinks at home. Um, alcoholic drinks at home or just not my character um, so this is signs of uh, you know you not being you or telltale signs but anyway um, those three things well those three deaths really affected me and so I know um, that that's a that was an issue and then lastly um, like I said, the church and, and how I feel about the church and its role in my life it really affected me as well. But those are the two reasons why I was feeling um, depressed and feeling like I, I don't know how to love myself. It's because I have those issues going on within me. Um, and those are the, the only two major issues. I could, I could break those issues down because those two issues break off into about 10 different branches or 10 different kind of um, leaves or whatever you want to say. But the root of the issue are those two problems. Like my relationship with the church um, and my, uh, my uh, experiences with losing those three people in my life. So I want to share that with y'all, man. Hopefully it's encouraging to somebody or to open up about uh, <laughs> whatever they're going through and, and try to understand, like, why is it that you're not the best that you can be? And because um, once you kind of understand that, maybe you could go do something else, you know, and, and be the best that you can be mentally, physically, and spiritually. You know, so I hope I, I become the best I can be mentally, physically, and spiritually now that I've kind of shaken that out of my system. Like, just the acknowledgement of it and trying to, actually break it down and understand what is what you know so uh, i'm happy i was able to do that um i feel um some weight being lifted off of my spirit off of my mind my shoulders it's kind of a it's, it's not kind of a, it is a relief to be able to understand what's happening and express that you know so um i'm gonna leave it at that y'all my nephew not here so i'm about to take off I don't know where you at or what you're doing, but I ain't got time. All right. Y'all stay blessed. Peace out. What's up, Mr. Fofo? Oh, he is? Look who I found, y'all. I found the real one. Oh, okay. Who's I found the real one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that hat. Hey, that chicken smells stupid ass retarded, dude. Oh, you can put some of this in the back. So you, you can throw it back there. You want to go over there and get some food? You can go over there. I got, I got you. Let's see this dude talking about. <coughs> sure, I got my stuff. He said he got another bag or something. So. What time is it? I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell y'all. Oh, look at right here on the phone. It's 7 o'clock. When, when we hit, when, when I said he was supposed to be coming, that was at like, what, 5 o'clock? Two hours later. I done went to the house, chilled in front of the crib, and then showing up right now. So I'm about to see what's happening. Oh, I'm trying to make it better Sometimes, for your son. Um, right. And that's what I was talking to Robert about. So it's like, I, I, I honestly don't know, but I got expelled. Yeah, I'm right. 
Ouch.